Okay, we're going to do a real quick video here. This is uh, Jeff W6FCC. Um, you have a radio which you've uh, set up your uh, server and connected with a USB cable. And then you go to uh, a client machine and you install the uh, RSBA1 software. You then go to the server list here and you've uh, put in the credentials to get to your server, however you do it, either through the LAN or through the internet, that's a separate subject. But here you are, once you've connected to the server, the server will populate this radio list. These are names that were given to the radios by the server computer, not by this client computer. So the first thing you notice here is there's uh, no uh, real good information about the uh, the virtual COM port number or much else here. So what I want to do is to show what happens when you right click and you connect on that. Uh, up pops a message which says that the virtual COM port number is not set. That's not a problem. So you just say OK to that. Another window will pop up and uh, this window has some network settings which you do want to pay attention to. This is assuming that you're connected by LAN, so pretty short delays in uh, pre-buffers in both the uh, received and, and the modulation mic uh, signals. But if you're over the internet, you want to change this to internet. Now what will happen here is these numbers, you notice these go from 150 and 200. The original numbers were 80 and 100. And now we're going 150 to 200, which gives it a little bit more buffer to handle uh, dropouts and what have you. So when you hit, when you OK that, you'll notice this is the 150-200. Next thing you've got to do is pick a virtual COM port number. Now there are many of them, as you can see here. Uh, they uh, are provided by the uh, virtual serial driver uh, that comes when you install ICOM. RSBA1. So let's just pick one. I'll just pick 11. It's available. And then the other two things I want to do is I do want to use the default speaker and mic because doing this allows windows to be used to pick where the audio is going to be sourced from the microphone and where it's going to go when the receiver is actually turned on. And uh, there are times when these when windows will pick the wrong device. So let's go ahead and uh, and we'll say OK here. And then what happens next is it will tell us that we're connected. Now I don't want to show the connected window because that has the uh, IP address of the connected system. But uh, believe me, it's now connected. So I'm going to pause this for a second and bring up... Uh, oh, before I do, since I'm connected, let's take a look at uh, what is the volume control set at? Now, oops, just let me let me bring this up. I have this icon over here that is called the volume control, and uh, how can I get that in the picture? Well, let me just show you what the properties are of it. I'm going to take a look at the properties of this volume control that I created a shortcut. If you right click on your desktop and say I want to create a shortcut, if you give it this mmsys.cpl, Windows will fill in the rest of the target address, but then uh, you can call it the uh, volume control. And what happens when you use that is you end up, let me click on it now and actually bring it up. What you get is the familiar uh, recording and playback and all the rest of this stuff. Now you'll notice I have several radios that I can access so I have a whole load of virtual audio ports that I can use. This particular virtual audio port is number two. Now sometimes you're gonna see your system has decided well virtual audio 2 is what I want to connect to as the default audio now let me go ahead and run RSBA1 here. I'm going to pause this now. Run RSBA1. Let's see what happens now. So we're now running RSBA1 and the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to go to this connect set. You're going to connect. And what you want to do is to be sure that you pick the right radio of course. Uh, the connection is USB. It's not remote. 
this is a little confusing. Uh, remote is not what this means. It means how is the radio actually connected to the uh, server computer, and it's connected by USB. And then what is the name of the uh, the name of the radio as shown in the radio list? And in this case, it's this particular one, the one that says 3.754. Now, the uh, COM port 11 is this, the port that I chose. It now has the correct baud rate, and the rest of this information is correct. And down here you pick uh, software closing turns off the radio. So we're okay there. Then the next thing you do is you come over here and we're going to hit the connect, and it will uh, go ahead, let me turn the spectrum analyzer off, and uh, I don't need the CW keyer on but then it will uh, connect and here we are on uh, 1.918 now I'm going to go here and turn up some volume and see what we have uh, volume okay we should be hearing something here but we're not hearing anything and the, the question is why not so let's go back over here to these audio connections and uh, speaker and headphones uh, let me pick the uh, my Creative Lab speaker and that may be the one I want to set as default right now these are probably coming out of earphones my guess is you're hearing it maybe I need to turn this down but if I want to change that I click on that and now I'm hearing audio come out of my speakers before it was coming out of the headphones but if it happens to be set to that V Audio channel that V Audio 2 by mistake you won't hear anything and the audio will just disappear and some people have said I've connected R RSBA1 and I don't hear anything well this is because in some instances Windows will see you've told it you want to use the default audio and it says well I know what the default is it's uh, the audio too and of course in that case you won't hear anything and the same thing is true of the recording you want to be sure that the mic set is not here but is up here to an actual microphone and I'm actually talking on this mic that's why it's uh, showing some activity so there's a couple things there you want to be sure that you do and you get there with that mmsys.cpl cpl meaning control panel so mmsys is the uh, name of the shortcut so now that I'm connected and I can now turn up volume and do all the rest of this stuff the only other thing that I would suggest people do is there's a beep that goes along with this program and those are set in the set mode now in set mode there's a few settings you want to look at one of them is if the audio sounds very raspy and way too loud it's probably because this is set up to a hundred percent and you may have to double click this let me do this here and change that from a hundred or from 255 down to a hundred and that'll fix that you do want to be sure that the uh, squelch will squelch the receiver. You put that on. You don't need this confirmation beep. And I prefer slider controls rather than these uh, knobs. I find the knobs to be difficult because with knobs, uh, you end up seeing something like, let me put this away for a second. With knobs, you've got this volume control with the squelch on the outside and the volume on the inside. And you come down here and you look at the uh, the filters and it's outside and inside. It's kind of annoying to deal with those. So you go up here under set mode and you turn those from knobs to sliders. And now if you look at them, uh, you've separated out the two halves of the uh, these, these things. You can notice it's changing over here. And uh, you can adjust the uh, the way the filter works. And then of course down here, what's happened is it's separated the squelch from the AF so now you can adjust them separately so that's it make sure you've picked the right audio for microphone and speaker and you can modify this a little bit uh, and you do want to make sure that you've picked those internet settings so that you don't have these uh, dropouts W6FCC have fun